Jay Ladner is an accomplished hair and makeup artist with experience in film, television, theater, print, and digital media. Recognized as Modern Salon's 2019 Top 100 and the American Influence Awards 2020 Emerging Hairstylist of the Year nominee, Jay is also a successful entrepreneur, educator, digital author, digital creative director of Oligo Professional, and hosts the new Stylist Left Behind podcast with Nina Tulio. Jay had been in the industry for 12 years. Welcome back to the Hairs Just a Strong Show. I'm your host, Robert Hughes, and I'm here with Jay Ladner, and we're going to get to hear his story and how he's gotten to where he is. What's up, Jay? How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. I Have you ever had, like, an out-of-body experience? Like, I, for a second, took in what you said about, like, my accolades are like where I've been and I'm like, someone pinch me. I'm doing good. I'm happy to be here with you. And yeah, to maybe help inspire our next generation or the generation that's already in the hair industry. That's awesome. Well, thanks for being here. And uh, so for those of uh, you who don't know, um, I met Jay at the um, the most recent show in Orlando, and we I was hanging out with Corey and Tony from Heritage and uh, they were covering premiere and doing a lot of interviews and stuff, and they introduced me, so I'm really grateful to uh, have had that introduction and to have you on the show today. Um, so why don't we just dive right in? Why don't we why don't we start off with hearing your uh, your story and um, you know how you got into hair and how how did you you know accomplish all these things in uh, just over a decade? I mean that's you know it sounds like a long time, but it's really like it's not, not that much time to get to where you are. So I think this is going to be a pretty awesome story. Thank you so much. Um, so let's start with, I, I always talk about life credibility has a lot to do with it, not just your career credibility. So okay. whatever happened before your career really sets you up and just having awareness of that. And at 16, and I'm going to go right in to it at 16, yeah. because of my sexuality, I was asked to leave my house and when I think about it now, I'm about to be 35. I'm glad that happened because I was in survival mode and I still tap into that energy now to this day, even though I got to where I am right now, but that survival mode of being abandoned, right? Like that pain was almost the catalyst that like projected me forward to make something out of my life. And I was almost this like black sheep in my family. I was always a rebel, um, which is now my title through beauty law tread, being a rebel with a beauty cause. And oh, I like that. I've always been that energy of where I had to fight. Like I had to show up for myself or that was it. That was it. I wasn't going to have a life or anything, but just all of that pain and trauma and abandonment. So I worked really hard. Then I was like a dancer. I was like performer, which is kind of cool because I get to now be on stage, but I was a performer, a costume character. Like it was really cool. And then I got injured and started doing um, hair in the costume shop for wigs. And the woman was like, Jay, you're really good at this. <laughs> like, And I had no idea like why my hands were moving the, the way they were through these wigs. And I was like, you know what? Like, I can't dance anymore. Let me think about it. And until I met my husband, Vince, was when I took that serious um, about my career. Because I was a bartender. I was a party boy. Like, okay. I, I didn't have any obligations but to, like, live my life, right? And a lot of us right. can agree with that until something serious happens for you, then you take yourself serious. So I met my husband he had two kids. I became a dad instantly. So I was like, Whoa, I have little baby nuggets that I have to take care of (laughs) with my man. So I was 21. I was like, had everything. I still had that fighter in me. And I went to Palm Mitchell school, Tampa. And at that time, Robert, everyone listening, in 2009, the energy at Palm Mitchell, the schools 
was out of this world. And I know they have good energy now, but like there was, there's a lot of us through that time. Cassandra Platinum, Jane and Bianca, like there's a lot of individuals that you see now up as industry leaders who went to school around that same time, oh, cool. um, which is really cool. So yeah. I had great mentors that set me up to win because I live by these two things. A closed mouth never gets fed and no one knows who you are unless you tell them. Mm, that's so good. I love that. No one knows who you are unless you tell them. And a lot of times now when I'm mentoring, I tell people like, you have to speak up, like speak up, know your worth. And you may not know what you're going to do, but at least get inside the room. So seek knowledge first, a close on that gets fed. And I was hungry. I was starving. I had something to prove to myself. I had to break through that chip on my shoulder. I had to break through that fighter, the one who would like just mess up the scene just cause right. Like chaos. Um, so I had great mentors that helped me navigate my world to where I am now. So at school, I had an amazing mentor, Alan Kim, who was my first salon owner, rest in peace. He just passed away this past year. And I still live to this day through that first year and a half with him. And he would check on me along the way. And he was like, dude, I'm going to make you Johnny cool. You think you're Johnny cool right now, but I'm going to make you Johnny cool. (laughs) So I was like, okay. And it was very hard. It was, I mean, he knew how to speak to that abandonment kid. Like he knew how to speak to that pain. Right. And he held me accountable. And when I left, um, because my husband was in the military and at the time it was so nice to tell. So no one knew was in the military. Okay. So we moved to North Dakota and from his leadership, I started managing a salon. So I managed a salon. Now I also had a blog. Oh no. So so wait, so how long have you been doing hair before you moved? A year and a half, a year and a half. And then you're managing a salon and then you start blogging. Okay. What's the blog about? So blog was all fashion, hair, beauty, and what happened was, oh, let me back up really quick. Alan, my first day, handed me the keys to the salon. All and right. he said, you're a leader. We're going to find that leader. Nice. And I was looking at 20-year-old Silas in front of me like, I don't know shit. Like, I don't know what's <laughs> happening. And he's like, you're new school. Like, show us the way. Like, we want your mindset. Like, you're very aware. Like, what do we need? So that was cool. Like he, I I'm love that. one, he showed me what it took to run a salon, run a salon. So now I move and I'm blogging and it gets picked up in New York city. At nice. Fashion. And I'm writing for the accessories council while managing a salon in North Dakota. And like, listen guys, I don't know if you've been in North Dakota, but I'm a Florida boy. And you want to get out. It's like Arctic Tundra. So (laughs) New York City was like my way of getting out. And I did everything for free. I worked for a production company with a creative director that housed designers at New York Fashion Week. And I wrote for the Accessories Council, which is very big. Like I was 23, just had nothing to lose. I was in survival mode in there. So I did that for a couple of years. And uh, I'm sorry, you weren't, you weren't getting paid for all that I writing. Did it all for free. Wow. See, Knowledge that's a first. public service announcement right there. You got to put Knowledge the investment first. in. Yeah. Our knowledge first. Awesome. When you seek knowledge first, you will eventually become your best future self. I love that. Knowledge yes. first. So I worked fashion week for years for free. I would find the cheapest flight, the cheapest bus fare. I would stay in hostels. I made it work because I, li- and then all of a sudden I got a check and it was cute. So nice. it was worth it. <laughs> I was in the room with creative directors and designers and just like around where the magic happens. And that to me was more than any check I could ever have. As I'm looking back now in the positions I'm at right now in my career, those learning knowledgeable moments set me up to claim my position now as a creative director. Like those moments, like 
where I had no clue what I was doing. I leaned into mentorships. I was able to do everything that no one was going to do. Right. I took the trash out with passion. Like I set the chairs up. I was like a yes, man. I was like, I'm not above it. And I still, to this day, will get on my hands and knees with my team. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Like you can never forget that you have to lead sometimes from the front, sometimes from the back and sometimes from the center, right? Like you've got to know, like through experience. So I did that. Then I moved to Ohio two years later. So now I'm like four years in. Okay. Okay. And I open a salon. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I love the, I love the momentum. Six weeks after living and moving to Dayton, Ohio, I open a salon. Did you know any stylists? No. Been in con- no. You just opened a salon. I, just you. I understood media from my time in New York. Right. I understand how the press worked. I was already doing it. I was right. I was a writer. I was still doing hair. Like I understood that news outlets are always seeking stories and we're licensed to touch. So our stories, everyone out there listening, our stories are magical. I love those. We just have to speak up. No one knows who you are unless you tell them. So I was able to tap into the military segment section, the media section, and then showing up every day. And I want to talk about this for anyone out there who wants to open up their own suite and they're scared, or you want to do a little bit better as a commission stylist, or, you know, you want to open up a salon. There's an energy that you have to tap into and it's called gratitude and awareness. When I open my salon, I remember making, and it gives me goosies. I remember making my first $50 and I had a party. <laughs> nice. I love that. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I got this. It's that first moment where you go, oh, someone bought it. It's on. Nice. Like now I got to dial it in, make it better, make little tweaks, adapt and evolve. Like I would celebrate every single dollar that came in and I would say, I accept. Nice. I accept because you know, we can tap into this a little bit later. A lot of hairdressers lead with pain, abandonment, shame or servants. The people who share the most love have most likely the most pain. Mm. And we have to remind ourselves of our worth every day. And you kind of believe the guest that walks in and says, you're amazing. Here's 50 bucks. Here's a hundred bucks. Now I don't even want to say what I charge. Like it's a wild, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's not everyone's reality. Cause I live in LA. Right. So I owned a salon for seven years, sold it. So my house, so my salon, and I moved my family to Los Angeles because I learned everything that I needed to learn. And I knew when it was time to leave my salon, I was absent. I was traveling, teaching brands. Like now I'm influencing all of that. Right. So like my social media is popping off. I'm traveling. I'm absent. So an absent owner is what a failing owner. So I bowed out at the top and I was like, love you guys. My team was like, yay, we love you. Thank you for your time. Moved to LA and now I'm representing amazing brands. I get to launch companies. I get to be a creative director for a professional hair care company while still being behind the chair. And it's never too late to adapt and evolve your life. And when you seek that knowledge first, and I kind of fast forward through, but you will become your ultimate, truest self. I love that. Just lean in to that uncomfortableness and that vulnerability and that survival mode. 
That's amazing. I love this. I love, I love uh, all this stuff. I was like taking some notes. Um, uh, some of these points that you're making here, like you're, uh, you're, you talk a lot about like proximity uh, to things like being in the room and being in places and uh uh, you were, you know, the writing and the fashion week, I'll be doing it for free. I think these are awesome messages to the up and coming and uh, like really kind of starting with that is just a great, um, a great message for yeah. the success, you know, for sure. So um, well, I'm curious to know about this whole, uh, this whole proximity thing. Uh you know, when you find yourself, there's a couple of things I actually wanted to ask you about, but um, I really was curious about, you know, when you find yourself in being in a, in a space and uh, having the opportunity to connect and, uh, and you know, you, I don't know that you use the word networking as much as you, you, you as much as you talked about, like being around, around people and making yourself, m- yourself heard and making yourself known. And uh, what was the state? What was the statement that you made? Um, no one knows who you are unless you tell them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to give us like um, maybe some people, some pointers with like, you know, how you are able to like, leverage that your proximity and uh and in the space and take advantage of those type of opportunities absolutely and i love that question because i know like i can tell someone just speak up and they're like wait what do you mean yeah what does that mean i I, because i know i'm vivacious and not everyone is like me so but i do want to give you that magic of what it does take so thank you for that question and you know It's a now, 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 if I was coming in the scene right now with the same energy, oh, it's game over. I'm going to have Vogue right now. You know what I mean? Like that opportunity at our fingertips, the accessibility to get inside any room you want. And you're going to be told no. I got told no a lot of times. But this is how I would get in a room when they told me no. Ready? It's, a ma- uh-huh. it's magic and I need everyone paying attention. If you're driving, pull over. I need you to get your notes out. So many a times I got told no. And I said, oh, that's cute. Um, thank you. But can you let me know why? No. Why you're saying no. Ooh. I changed N-O to K-N-O-W. I love that. And then, you want to know what happened? And 90% of the rooms that told me no, they said, you know what? I don't know. So <laughs> you, you can come tomorrow. Oh, nice. I love that. It's easier for someone who has a lot going on, a lot of pressure. It's never about you. It's about them and what you can offer them. So if someone comes to me and listen, I have mentees running around the U S and when they come to me and they say, Hey, I love what you're doing, but I want to make a, I want to make magic with you. And this is what I have to offer. So one, you have to know what you want from that room. Then you say, this is what I can bring to the table. And this is what I can relieve from you. Right. So if someone's going to mentor you, you have to mentor them as well and the magic that you offer. Right. And through time, that answer becomes more clear through knowledge and experience. That answer becomes more clear. So in the beginning, you may not know. And maybe it's I will do everything that annoys you. Right. (laughs) And if someone says that to me, Robert, I'm like, um, I'm here tomorrow at this time, this time at this location. If you're going to do everything that annoys me, like sign me up because as you become more successful, the pressure is real. So what are you going to do for them while they do for you? If you walk in the room, not seeking knowledge and being very selfish and your reason why is not aligned for a greater purpose, you will never be in that room. So intention is everything. The why is everything. And what you can offer someone is more than any paycheck. Mm. 
That's so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You literally articulated something so well. I love this. I'm going to, uh, we're going to have to make a little post with that, with that little quote of yours. Yeah, yeah for sure. And share that. Oh, that's so good. So, so really just kind of making, understanding your why I'm just going to repeat this. Um, so understanding, know the why, what you want out of the room and uh, what you have to offer and having yourself, don't be selfish, align with a bigger, a bigger goal. And uh, it sounds like really like building community through yeah. uh, like-minded people and common goals and uh, stuff like that. Is that some? Yeah, I love that. And I also want to add, if you don't mind, that you're never above doing the minute things. Those small little detail shifts inside the room, whatever needs to be done to make the greater outcome possible, do those little things. Those little things become big things. And those big things become opportunity. And those opportunities become knowledge and that knowledge becomes a check. Oh my gosh, you! I feel like uh, I'm going to guest speaker um, um, uh, soon, and like I'm totally taking some of these things. What? I will give you credit, but Please. I am. This is like so good for the young, yeah. for the young stylists specifically, uh, but also anybody looking to make a change or do something new. Uh, so good, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I live. Thank you so much for this. Uh, I want to uh, I want to dive into something you talked about is being the person who launches brands. You kind of just skipped over that, but I feel like we should talk about that next time so we can dive into it and really get into it. Uh, but um, I wanted to know is uh, before we wrap it up, is if there is there any like la- like just I mean I don't can't imagine. Uh, I mean some of the stuff that you said is just kind of so mind mind blowing and the you, way you're able to articulate it. Uh, but is there another any like last piece of uh advice you have for the startup hairdresser whether they're getting started in their career opening a salon launching a product or going independent anything like that i would love to take a moment to let people know that one their journey before walking into the beauty industry matters their journey before that, their life credibility has this just enough weight as your credibility in the industry. So that you have to tap in to that fighter or that lover or that awareness. Like you have to realize and believe yourself that you can do it and understanding what the magic we have within our hands that connect to our mind, that connect to our heart. And the power that we have as hairdressers and remembering that it's a special relationship through time that will change your life, their life, and then the world. And remembering that on those hard days, we get a special moment with people who trust us, who lean into us and believe us. And they tell us their world that we are sometimes a lifesaver, mm-hmm. right? And remembering that you're worth it, you matter, and you deserve to have people lean into you on that and to not forget to work on yourself. Because the moment you work on yourself first, your business, your life, your world will be suited up so you can take on any and every opportunity that comes your way. I wish I would have dug deeper into myself a lot sooner than what I have. So I want to give you that permission to just love yourself, hug yourself, look in the mirror. We live in front of a mirror 24 seven. And when was the last time you saw yourself? Mm. Mm. Ask. So I want to ask you that as I get off hairdresser strong with Robert, When's the last time you truly looked in that mirror and believed your magic? Mm. Because everyone showing up for you is waiting for you to acknowledge that. And we have to start believing ourselves before we can believe anyone else. So everyone listening, look in that mirror. You may cry, you may shout, and that's okay. You may laugh. It's all good. All the feelings are good. 
but believe your magic and your worth and work hard on that. And you'll watch everything become more clear, more defined, and more opportunity will flow your way. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. So I, uh, I definitely am personally getting some great stuff out of this too. And uh, I'm sure that our listeners and viewers are as well. Uh, And I feel like that's just such a perfect note to uh, kind of tie it off and, uh, and save, save some more for next time. Um, Yes. I would love to be back, please. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. And thank you so much. Um, So if you're listening on podcast, uh, please uh, just take a second and give us a rating. Obviously five stars is preferable. If you're watching on YouTube or Instagram, please leave a comment below, like subscribe, follow that helps support us and helps us get more people and more awesome messages like this. Um, And until Until next time, Jay, thanks so much again. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.